My name is Steve, and in this video I want to take you through an item that I've recently purchased from manufacturer Gebby, and it's an espresso machine. And this is my first espresso machine. Bought this with my own money, so no one is sponsoring this, and really wanted to give my opinion on why I purchased this over some of the other competitors in this price range, and then also take you through some of the setup of it, my first impressions, because as I was doing my research, I really didn't see a lot of information out on this particular machine and model. So I'll have links in the description and the specific model number in the description. So as I started looking for my first espresso machine, there were a few things I had an idea of what I was looking for. And the first one being cost. You can get anywhere from you know, under a hundred dollars to over, you know, thousands of dollars. And I wanted to be under two hundred dollars. The other was form factor. So you've got different sizes, shapes, and I liked the narrow, longer shape of this device. And also there's others similar to it, just for the space I have in my kitchen. So as I was looking at all these different devices that are out there within this $200 price range. What attracted me to this Gavi device? A few things that I noticed. Some of them are touting, oh, 15 bars of pressure versus 20 bars of pressure. And Gavi is one of them that has all kinds of 20 bar pressure machines. And as I did my research, it turns out you only need nine bars of pressure for an espresso. So 15 versus 20 is really marketing and doesn't make much difference. It has pre-infusion. So it pre-wets the grounds before it puts the full water and, ever, and the pressure through. So I like that as an option. I felt that the frother was a little bit better already on the Gavi machine. And after comparing this to some of the other higher end ones, it at least looked like it was a better frother. We'll find out. The other was that it had a pressure gauge. I felt while I don't control the pressure, I thought I could, as I'm testing, am I getting a good uh, coffee grounds and a good solid pressure through the coffee grounds? This would help me with am I staying consistent? Am I having problems with the pressure? So I'm hopeful that the pressure gauge also gives a little bit a better feature and overall it really came down to price so the bottom line with most things this added all the features and when I was looking this was on sale and this was on sale for $179.99 $180 so I ended up purchasing this one we're gonna give it a try and see how it does So now that we've tested everything, we know all the functionality is working, we don't have a defective machine, we're going to move on to trying our first espresso. And I'll do a quick showing of the first mistake I made. And that first mistake was not following the instruction manual. And that came to the amount of coffee grounds that this portafilter 
will hold. I was watching a lot of YouTube videos and everybody was doing, you know, 18 grams of coffee, 20 grams of coffee. So I thought, oh, well, I'll start with 16. I'll go a little bit lower than what most of them do. This specific type of 51 millimeter portafilter with the double walled basket. If you read the manual, the maximum it should be able to hold is 14 grams. And I was trying 16 and you'll see how there's no way you can get 16 grams of coffee into this. So I've gone back and I am going to use 13 grams of coffee. So to start with, we're gonna turn the machine on. I did notice it takes about 45 seconds typically from first startup to where all the lights come on. I have the portafilter. I'm going to put it on my scale. Well, we're going to turn the scale on first. That helps. So we're just going to zero this out. I've already ground my coffee. Now, getting into grinding coffee and grinders and all those types of things, I wanted to keep the focus on this machine. So I'm not going to get into all the different uh, types of grinders and what I'm using, but I do have my coffee here. So I've zeroed out my port filter. Uh, this one isn't an exact fit, so I'm going to have to see how well I can get this to fill without spilling it everywhere. It's a little tricky. Let's see where we got. And right at 13 grams of coffee. So that's exactly where I want to be. And I'm going to do everything with the default from this machine. Uh, I decided to use the little plastic tamper, even though I think it's, you know, very difficult to use. I'll do this over the sink. I'm just going to try to level out the grounds a little bit. And you can see 13 grams does pretty good. We're going to take and tamp it. Probably not very level. And that's why I don't like this plastic tamper. But we'll see what we get. The, the Pressure port of filter that they give you, the double walled, is supposed to make it much easier. So you don't have to have the perfect grind, you don't have to have the perfect tamp. But let's see what we get. So we're going to put that in. I just have a couple of different glasses here to help catch everything. I'm going to do a double espresso. So we're going to use our double shot, all the default settings. in the pre-infusion. Now you're going to get that coming out, looking good on both sides. Let's see how the flavor is. And it is certainly, I would say, it's not bitter, it's not sour, so that is good. but it definitely feels watered down. So this is where you wanna maybe get into then some of the manual settings, because your coffee, your grind settings, all of those things are gonna affect the final output. So typically, you're probably not gonna to wanna to use the default settings. So you do have ways to do custom output where you'll want to use your scale to see how much water is coming out, how much coffee is coming out. But if you go through the instructions, press the single shot and the double shot buttons at the same time and hold for three seconds. You'll hear it beep. Now you're in manual mode. When you press the button, you it will keep running the water through until you press the button again. And then you can press the steam wand button to now set that time to the button. And you can dial it in that way for your specific coffee, your specific grind, your specific dose, 
all those things that go into making an espresso, which I'm not going to cover in this video. Lots of videos on dialing in machines. But this absolutely will work for getting started in espresso. I'm happy with it from a starter machine. I am going to do a few uh, purchases and I'll go over those right now with what I'm looking to do. So a few of my initial purchases, again, additional expenses, but they do enhance being able to dial things in a little bit more, being able to experiment a little bit more, being able to learn more about espresso with a cheaper machine like this. One of those being a much better tamper. So this is a leveled tamper with a pressure on it. So versus this little plastic thing here, I now have a tamper that should make tamping much easier. And along with that, I did buy a, a leveler with a tamper built into it, but I'm just using this for the leveler. So I use this on the portafilter to level the grounds, then tamp it with the proper tamper. And I did decide I wanted to buy a better portafilter. So this is a bottomless portafilter, but what it allows is for a larger basket size. So with this, I am able to get 18 grams of coffee. I've been, uh, you know, probably will be using 17 grams myself. Uh, I did buy a screen, a puck screen for on top. And I also bought a magnetic uh, dosing ring. This goes on top of here. So when I'm trying to pour my coffee grounds, as you saw on this portafilter, it's kind of tough. A little bit easier to pour them in here, get everything tamped and ready. So those are some of the upgrades I've purchased. I'll call them upgrades. Those are some of the accessories I've purchased along the way. And haven't done a lot with the frother. I have tried doing some initial frothing of milk. Works well, but I would say it's a little bit uh, underpowered. Doesn't seem, to, it takes a while to heat things up. So it actually took me quite a while to feel the hot cup to where it's getting to the right temperature. So it definitely works. But I would say that's one of the things of this being maybe not as high end of a model. So what are my final thoughts on this Gevi espresso machine uh, and the overall experience so far as I'm just getting started in espresso making. And I want to keep this specific to this machine as best I can or machines in this price range. As I said in the intro, the reasons I bought this machine over some of the others in this price range are still what I like about the machine after doing some initial testing and starting to create some of my own espresso. I like the pressure gauge, being able to use that for consistency. Am I, you know, where is that pressure gauge during the process of making the espresso is a nice feature to have. I like the wand for frothing milk. While I didn't go through the whole process, I'm still learning frothing milk. I felt it was pretty easy to control and worked very well. Uh, I'm not an expert on this, but I was happy with the frothing one. I like the fact that I can customize the timing for pulling my shot. I can adjust it manually, set it to the specific coffee after I dial it in, and then I'm just pressing the button because I know I've already gone through that process of dialing it in. So there is some customization you can do. It has the uh, pre-infusion which I like. It wets the grounds a little bit before it pushes through. Seems to be a nice feature uh, to have on this machine. So overall, it ticks the box for what I was looking for. But some of the cons, and the cons, there'll be some specific to this machine, but more so the cons specific to getting into these cheaper espresso machines. But one of the cons specific to this machine is the portafilter. And really more so the way they've integrated the basket into the portafilter. They have this little notch in the basket that fits onto the portafilter. And then once you put it in, 
you kind of turn it so it doesn't fall out. And while that works in theory, it's kind of a pain because the basket turns really easily. And anything I'm trying to do with tamping, with adjusting the coffee grounds, this thing is spinning all the time, which makes it a little bit of a pain. As you're watching some of the espresso videos, everybody likes to tamp out the grounds. And I found to hit this hard enough to try to get the grounds out, the entire basket falls out. It's not really held in place very securely. So I didn't care for the way the basket fits into the porta filter. Also, more specific to these lower price espresso machines, using this for water. So you've got your water tank, you can use this for hot water. So say you want to make an Americano, you pull your shot, you want to now fill it with hot water, it's slow. The pump takes a long time, it just kind of squirts little bits of water out at a time and it is very slow to fill any kind of a cup. So I still use a separate kettle for my water and then I pour, pull my shot and I pour the water separately. Uh, so that is specific, I think, to any of the devices. Obviously, this plastic tamper that you see with everything, you're gonna wanna replace that with a, a better tamper right off the bat. Uh, and overall, the other thing I would say is potentially one of the things you wanna consider when purchasing some of these lesser priced espresso machines, almost all of them use a 51 millimeter Porta filter and basket. And so I've gone through and updated this as I showed to a bottomless porta filter. But if you ever want to move up to another machine, this 51 millimeter, you're stuck within this model and this price range. As soon as you step up, you get into a 54 and a 58 millimeter. And so you're going to have to replace any accessories you buy for this 51 millimeter size. So things to consider on, you know, an upgrade path and are you going to think you're just going to stay with this because you're just trying to, you know, mess around with espresso, you're not looking to get too serious. I think this is a great starter kit. I think it gets you into learning about espresso, how to make espresso, gives you enough manual controls to figure out is this something you want to do more of? Is this a hobby you want to spend more money on? But if you think you're going to do that, you might want to look at spending a little more money up front to get to that 54 millimeter or 58 millimeter porta filter. that then when you buy some of those accessories, you're not having to spend all of your money on upgrading everything you have. So I hope that helps. I'm very happy with this. I'm looking forward to making more espresso. I'm looking forward to learning more about espresso. Uh, I will be doing another video on some of the 3D printing accessories that I've been making and putting together to enhance my espresso experience. So if you want to see that, please subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notifications. And we'll see you in the next video.